You have surely heard this song before. Quick, what song is that? Your answer probably depends on your age. This was sampled in 2021 by Lotto for the song Big Energy, also by Mariah Carey in 1995 for the song Fantasy, or you might know the original song Genius of Love by Tom Tom Club from 1981. There are a ton of samples in between, a ton of lyrical quotes. This song is far reaching in its influence, but the more you keep digging, the more you see that it's all connected. Today, we're gonna cover a lot of ground by way of this song, Genius of Love by Tom Tom Club. I'll go ahead and tell you everywhere that we're going, but you'll have to see how we get there. We're gonna talk about Tom Tom Club, sure, but then also Zap, Common, Paul Simon, Jay Dilla, ACDC, Grandmaster Flash, The Talking Heads, Curtis Blow, Fela Kuti, and just when we can't go any deeper, we're gonna loop it back around and connect the whole thing together. You ready? First, let's start with the most recognizable samples of this song. There's the most famous one, Fantasy by Mariah Carey. This song was released in 1995 and samples the main riff from Genius of Love. Sorry if I'm killing your vibe by stopping the music, but let's keep going. If that's not your flavor, let's talk about the drums that are sampled on Mark Morrison's Return of the Mac from 1996. Oh! There are also plenty of instances of lyrics of this song being quoted with artists like Tupac or Busta Rhymes. What I'm gonna do to Erica Bad do? You get it. There are a lot of samples. These date all the way back to 1981 with songs like It's Nasty, parentheses, Genius of Love by Grandmaster Flash. What was that for? Oh, because I said we were going to mention Flash and here he is. This is an interpolation, technically, but it's one of the earliest, biggest examples of this song being sampled. In fact, Grandmaster Flash knew it would be a hit song. Tina Weymouth, a member of Tom Tom Club, did a photo shoot with Flash, and afterwards they came back to the studio together. As Chris France recalled, Grandmaster Flash said, you know you're gonna be hearing this Genius of Love beat a lot. And I said, you think so? And he said, I know so. It's going to be famous. Of course, he was absolutely right. This may have been because Chris France says they modeled the groove after the Zap song, More Bounce to the Ounce. Yeah, that's the Zap connection. Okay, so who is this band, Tom Tom Club? Who are Chris France or Tina Weymouth? Tom Tom Club is a rock band started by Tina Weymouth and Chris France. She plays bass and sings, and he plays drums. And they're married to each other. Genius of Love is actually the band's second single, the first being Wordy Rapping Hood, which sees Tina sort of rapping. She's rapping, Grandmaster Flash interpolates Genius of Love, they take a picture together, it's starting to make more sense. But you know what's going to stop making sense? That's a really terrible segue, I'm sorry. Tom Tom Club performed Genius of Love live for the 1984 Talking Heads concert documentary, Stop Making Sense. We don't have to do the sound effect after every time I mention one of these artists, but yes, this is the Talking Heads connection. It's right in the middle of the show when David Byrne needs to do a costume change into his famous oversized suit. But why did Tom Tom Club perform in the middle of a Talking Heads show? Well, that's because Chris France and Tina Weymouth are also in the Talking Heads. You know, the band who sings Once in a Lifetime, they got the huge oversized suits. They're led by David Byrne, or as I call him, Questlove for white people. They formed Tom Tom Club while Talking Heads were on a break, while David Byrne worked on a solo project. So they went off and started this band, which just so happened to make Genius of Love, which went gold before any Talking Heads single did. This song actually sort of kept the band together because they wanted a Talking Heads song to top it. Anyway, Tom Tom Club was a side project from France and Weymouth, two of the members from Talking Heads. Two of the Talking Heads, I guess you could say. I don't know, nobody says that. But their involvement with the band, specifically the album right before Tom Tom Club, it's an incredible album that's the next stop on our journey. 
So I recently shared in another video that someone had sent me a link to my own obituary online asking if I was okay. It was an obvious scam, but it felt weird to see someone using me and my information like this. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Stuff like your full name, email, home address, health records, relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. This not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access stuff like my social media accounts or bank accounts or other sensitive information. There's a ton of other features like antivirus VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more all within the same app. It's really easy to set up, and best of all, I get everything at one affordable price. Aura is always on, keeping me safe so I can focus on other stuff with peace of mind. I value my privacy, and I value yours. You can go to aura.com slash diggingthegrades to start your free two-week trial. It's linked below in the description as well. Right, so the album just before TomTom Tom Club's debut was the Talking Heads 1980 release, Remain in Light. This album came about because the rest of the band was frustrated with David Byrne. They felt he was taking all the credit, and it felt like they were just backing him up instead of actually being involved in the creative process. So while they considered whether or not to quit the band, Tina Weymouth and Chris France headed to the Bahamas, where they were inspired by the music they heard, meeting up with reggae musicians Sly and Robbie, and starting with jam sessions at Compass Point Studios. Eventually, they added guitarist Jerry Harrison, producer Brian Eno, and frontman David Byrne, and the album Remain in Light was born. This album is a big deal for a few reasons. For one, it's a pretty big departure from their previous albums. They have one or two songs that can sound similar, but this takes on an entirely different approach, incorporating new influences throughout. One of those influences, as Tina Weymouth said, is hip-hop. In 1980, it was still emerging, but she said they realized things were shifting. They were becoming less rock-heavy and pulling in synths and global influences. On the rock side, though, while Talking Heads was recording this album, ACDC was in the next room recording Back in Black. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming, did you? It's true, though. Anyway, France and Weymouth say that for them, the big influences on this album are funk, R&B, and hip-hop. In fact, Chris France had just provided drums for the Curtis Blow song, The Breaks, and showed the song to the rest of the band. And on the song Cross-Eyed and Painless, David Byrne is specifically emulating Curtis Blow's percussive flow. Breaks in a bus, breaks on a car, breaks to make you a superstar. Sure, it's not a 100% match, but you can hear the similarity. And for Byrne, that was a good thing. As he said in Rolling Stone, we deconstructed everything, and then as the music evolved, we began to realize we were in effect reinventing the wheel. Our process led us to something with some affinity to Afrofunk, but we got there the long way around. And of course, our version sounded slightly off. We didn't get it quite right, but in missing, we ended up with something new. There's one other artist who had a huge influence on this album. This is gonna take us to the other side of the world. Any guesses? For a long time I felt. This was Talking Heads, but that was Fela Kuti from the album Aphrodisiac, and this had a huge influence on Remain in Light. The long extended grooves, the percussive feel to everything. Honestly, knowing this makes Remain in Light feel like the Talking Heads is just doing their best Fela Kuti impression. But as Burns said, they didn't get it quite right, and in missing it, ended up with something new. He also said their sound on this album was, quote, too black for white radio and too white for black radio. That sounds harsh, but he's kind of right. Considering Talking Heads' previous sound, this is completely different. And for fans of Fela Kuti, this album just isn't the same as Fela. Wait a minute, I just realized there was no sound effect for Fela Kuti. What are we doing? Here we go. Thank you. But of course, this album gradually grew on people, including the song that is now one of their most well-known, Once in a Lifetime. 
But that Fela Kuti influence, producer Brian Eno is the one who introduced the band to the music of Fela Kuti, which set them in this direction. And as he described it, I remember the first time I listened and how dazzled I was by the groove and rhythmic complexity. My friend Robert Wyatt called it jazz from another planet, and suddenly I thought I understood the point of jazz, until then an almost alien music to me. Okay. Two things. I love that he says he thought he understood the point of jazz. I just think that's hilarious. But more than that, he called it jazz from another planet. And that's a pretty good description. Fela Kuti was a Nigerian musician who is regarded as the king of Afrobeat, fusing traditional West African rhythms with American funk and jazz. It's not purely one or the other, it's an incredible fusion of both. And then Talking Heads is taking this fusion, fusing that with their rock and punk roots. This album is very much a collaborative effort, but when the band got an advanced copy of the album, it said all songs by David Byrne, Brian Eno, and Talking Heads. This understandably upset Jerry Harrison, Tina Weymouth, and Chris France, who had just poured so much into this album, and also who have individual names. And this album, fusing African music with American rock, was incredibly influential. Artists like Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, and Paul Simon all began experimenting with African-infused rock through the 80s. What, you thought I forgot about Paul Simon? Come on. So Fela Kuti, who is African, is fusing American musical elements into his music, making a new African-American music hybrid. The Talking Heads, a white American rock band, incorporates his music with theirs on Remain in Light, creating a sort of imperfect American-African-American mix. Tom Tom Club is created by the bass player and drummer from Talking Heads. They keep fusing hip hop, funk, and R&B into their music, and this music gets sampled by artists like Grandmaster Flash, making it a sort of African American American African American music. Can you imagine if Burna Boy sampled that Grandmaster Flash song? That would make it an African African American American African American music. <laughs> All right, that's enough. We could keep going like this, showing connections and influences all the way back, but instead, let's loop this back all the way around. Fela Kuti has been sampled by artists like The Roots, Most Def, J. Cole, and track one to Common's 2000 album like Water for Chocolate, the song Time Travelin', a tribute to Fela. This album has a few Fela Kuti references on it, but the first track here was produced by D'Angelo, James Poyser, Questlove, and drumroll please, J. Dilla. Someone recently commented and said I should rename the channel to Digging the Great, because I only ever talk about Dilla. But I make zero apologies for that. Anyway, J Dilla also produced the song Shump by De La Soul from 2003, which samples, you guessed it, Genius of Love by Tom Tom Club. We started with Mariah Carey and Return of the Mac, went through Tom Tom Club, Talking Heads, Fela Kuti, and circled back to Common, J Dilla, and De La Soul. Music is all connected, whether it's through inspiration, sampling, or a rejection and deliberately going in a different direction. It's all connected one way or another. Speaking of music that spans multiple decades in different forms, Grandmaster Flash, who we already talked about, his song The Message is a landmark song for hip hop. But was Flash actually involved in the creation of that song? Sorry, that's in another video. Click here to watch that story. 